Great. Well, hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and you're joining us into another uh, live stream of Let Us Reason. And with me here, our dear brother, the fabulous Sam I am, Sam Shamoon. He's right here. You're looking at him. So, Sam, how are you, bro? By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, I'm doing good, and I pray. Let me ask the Lord Jesus just to purify you and I. Amen. In the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus cleanse us and purify us of our filth, of our failures. The Lord Jesus have mercy on us and give us the power of the Holy Spirit to crucify our flesh, not to be hypocrites, but to walk Amen. in the power of the Holy Spirit in obedience to our Lord Jesus and love our Lord Jesus by our actions and our words. And we ask the Lord Jesus to take over the session and give us the wisdom to destroy objections against his glory <clears throat> and take every Muslim captive for the glory of Jesus Christ. Increase in us, Lord Jesus. We need you. We love you. Bless this time. Amen. Amen, brother. So today, uh, as I mentioned to you, Sam, we are going to take it easy. We'll just uh, let it, uh, you know, flow. Basically, we already have some clowns uh, yeah, as you can notice, you know, which is going to make it really fun. So as I said, let's talk today about the most ridiculous objections our Muslim friends come up with. Yeah, by the way, you have uh, Muhammad and clown here. And by the way, viewer discretion advice. If you guys don't think it's appropriate for Christians who love Jesus Christ to mock and insult fools, blasphemers, and idolaters, then this show won't be for you because I believe there's a time and place to insult people, mock people, and treat them <clears throat> accordingly to give them a taste of their own medicine when they blaspheme Jesus Christ, att attack his word, and try to divide the brethren. So viewer discretion advised. And we ask the Lord Jesus to bless us and guide us in the power of the Holy Spirit. You already have a Mohammedan clown here named Iron Stone Smoocher he, in, in the Facebook channel. And I hope he hears me. Hi, Iron Guard. I'm going to have a fun at your expense and exposing your prophet. So I'm going to call him Iron Stone Smoocher. And why do I say that? Contrary to what Muslims will tell you, folks, contrary to what Muslims claim, they are not monotheists. They are pagans and idolaters, and they definitely do not worship one God. For instance, Iron Stone Smoocher follows the sunnah of his prophet who smooched and smothered the black stone. And yet, even Umar ibn al-Khattab, and you know this, Al-Fadi, this is your background. Umar ibn al-Khattab, absolutely. Yeah. Umar ibn, ibn al-Khattab, when he went to the black stone to kiss it, he goes, I know, and this is in Bukhari and this is in Muslim. It says, I know that you're a stone that neither can benefit nor harm. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So even he was perplexed. My prophet, who's supposedly a monotheist, when in actuality he's an agent of the devil, an antichrist, who's under the f feet and wrath of the Lord Jesus Christ, kissed this black stone, and yet he claimed to be a monotheist. But since he's the prophet, an example for me to emulate, I kiss it as well, even though I don't see the rationale or the benefit in doing so. But here, Iron Stone Smoocher, again, as a typical Muslim, and these are some of the objections that Muslims bring up, some silly objections that we constantly refute, but it falls on deaf ears. But you do have those Muslims who are being touched by the Holy Spirit. Like here you have, joining us, Muhammad ibn Jaris. And I want to encourage everyone, pray for Muhammad ibn Jaris. He's been coming to my live streams, yours and David Wood, and he said, I used to think that David and Sam Shimon were liars because that's what they told me. But now I know they're not lying. They're speaking the truth. And he's now drawn to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he finds it more attractive. So God is touching Muslims. Amen. Hopefully the Amen. Lord will touch iron stone liquor and that he'll repent of his idolatry. But guess what he's quoting? Hey, iron guard, I hope you're listening because I'm going to turn Matthew 15, 24 against you and your prophet. Guess what he's quoting, Al-Fadi, to prove that Jesus is only sent to the Jews. Matthew exactly. Jesus. It's a ridiculous uh, argument. Of, um, I'm getting tired of it, to be honest with you, bro. Yes. But go ahead. Let's deal with it. Okay, so guys, in the comment section, hold Iron Stone Liquor's feet to the floor as we're going to now make him famous. I want to take his objections and turn it against him. Let's go to Matthew 15, 24, <clears throat> if Very you don't mind. So I we're going to take... We're gonna take the common, silly objections of Muslims, and by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to use the very objections to prove Muhammad is a false prophet, a son of Satan, and that Jesus Christ is the Lord God of Muhammad. 
So let's begin Matthew 15, 24. Read that for me. So Matthew 15, 24 reads, he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. So I'm gonna let the commenters like Jai and Protestant believer and others make sure they get his attention that he's listening and make sure he tries to respond. Now, Al, if I just read that verse in isolation, if I just read that verse in isolation, then clearly the impression is that Jesus Christ is not the savior of the world. He's only sent to redeem Israel. Exactly. However, however, Matthew 15 is not the beginning of the gospel. It's not the end of the gospel. Matthew 15 is in the middle of the gospel. There are 14 chapters that precede it. And then you have chapter 16 to 28 that come right after it. So I'm going to now read Matthew 15, 24 in the context of Matthew to see what Jesus meant and what Jesus did not mean. So guys, embark on this journey with me because I'm trusting the Spirit to use me now to teach you, our brothers and sisters, how to interpret the Bible, how not to interpret it, and how then to take this sword, because the Bible is the sword of the Spirit. Because the Bible says God's Word, which includes the Bible because it's God's Word, is our sword given to us by our Spirit to use in spiritual battle. Show you how to use this sword for the glory of Christ against heretics and false prophets like Muhammad. Now, do me a favor. Go yes, to Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. Read verses 17 and 18. Matthew 10, verses 17 and 18. All right. We're going to go to Matthew 10. We're going to read 17. Verse 17 says, Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. Verse 18. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells the disciples, the time will come that you'll be taken before the rulers of the Gentiles to be a witness to their rulers and a witness to the Gentiles. In other words, Jesus has already told them, Jesus has already told them in advance, though I'm sending you to the lost sheep of Israel, the time will come where your ministry will extend beyond Israel to the nations because you'll be my mouthpieces, my instruments, through which I reach the nations for the gospel. Amen. So you see that, right? That's what Jesus told them? That's exactly what he says. Oh, okay. But now let's see what prophecy Jesus fulfills. Our Lord fulfills an Old Testament prophecy that shows that he is the father's servant who's not just the savior of Israel, but the savior of the ends of the earth, a savior for all Gentiles. Go to Matthew 12, read 17 to 21. Matthew 12, verses 17 to 21. Now, okay. folks in the comment section, especially on, on YouTube, because he's on YouTube, he's commenting. Brothers, Protestant Jai, make sure he's listening to these passages and do not let him run to his black stone for comfort because that black stone can't save him. Matthew 12, 17 to 21. Slowly but surely read it for us, brother. All right, starting from verse 17. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall proclaim justice to the Gentiles. To who? Gentiles. So Jesus is the servant of the Father of Isaiah 42, who will bring justice to to Israel or to the Gentiles? To the Gentiles. Unless the, the clown doesn't know the difference between Gentiles and Jews, then he's obviously mixing the two together. Oh, but it gets even better. Keep reading, brother. It gets even better. Verse 19. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A battered reed he will not break off, and a smoldering wick he will not put out until he leads justice to victory. And in his name, the Gentiles were hope. Now read 21 one more time. Saints, listen to 21. Jesus fulfills Isaiah 42, verse 4, quoted in Matthew 12, 21. And what does it say Jesus will do? Read it one more time. And in his name, the Gentiles will hope. In his name, 
the Jews will hope. No, that's not what it says, man. I don't know what Bible you're looking at. But so wait, Matthew 12, which comes before Matthew 15, Matthew 10, which comes before Matthew 15, Matthew has already prepared us for Jesus's universal mission. Yeah, but, but you have to understand this iron man doesn't know math. Okay. Well, it's going to get worse for this man because we're going to teach him math because even Muhammad in the Quran doesn't know math. As you can tell from the share of the inheritance, he'd even know how to divide the inheritance equitably or correctly because if you do the math, it doesn't add up. But that's another topic for another time, my brother. Now, I want you to go to Matthew 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. Hold this stone smoocher to the fire, his feet to the fire because he's running now. He's getting embarrassed because his prophet is being exposed. Now, go to Matthew 24, 14. Jesus speaking. Matthew 24, 14. This is what he says. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. No, wait, read it one more time. Matthew 24, 14. Our Lord Jesus says, what about his gospel? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Wait, the same Jesus who said I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel tells the disciples my gospel of the kingdom must be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a witness to all nations, not just the Jews. And this man had the audacity to quote the very gospel that tells us though Jesus himself came to the Jews on earth when Jesus was physically on earth. The physical Jesus who was on earth limited his ministry to the Jews but after ascending to glory, he would send out his disciples to all the nations. Oh, wow. That's why now we need to go to Matthew 28, verse 19. Now, guys, don't forget. Some of you already quoted Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 20, 19. This is now the risen Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, the Jesus who died for our sins, raised immortal. He's now in his flesh body, a body of flesh that's now made immortal. And before he enters heaven... Here's the commission to the disciples. You disciples are going to do this now on my behalf. Matthew 28, verse 19. So verse 19, this is what he says. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay. How much clearer could Matthew be? How much clearer can our Lord be? How much clearer could the Old Testament be? Messiah Jesus comes to the Jews but he's not just for the Jews. So what did our Lord mean? And I want the Christians to understand what our Lord meant in Matthew 15, 24. Yes, Jesus while on earth, the historical Jesus while he's on earth, he limited his earthly ministry to the Jews. Why? Because the promises were given to the Jews. So since they are the heirs of the prophets, the heirs of the covenant, Jesus is going to come to the Jews and announce to them, your Messiah has come, the promises are fulfilled, turn to me. After he does that, after he's crucified and dies as a vicarious sacrifice for our sins, and he's raised from the dead, now he'll empower his disciples <clears throat> by his Holy Spirit, which he'll pour out on them, to then take that message that he preached to the Jews throughout the whole world to all the nations. That's what Matthew 15, 24 means. But now again... Because this iron stone smoocher doesn't really care what Matthew says. He just wants to take snippets, quoted out of context, to try to confuse us. Literally does he realize the true Jesus, who is the Lord of glory, has raised up his warriors to silence these lies and turn arguments against them. I'm going to use this Quran. Now, for the Christians, I want you to listen to this. This man, again, confirms David Wood's words. And David Wood was in the comments section. David Wood came out with a session where he says Muslims are apostatizing because Muslims are going against the commands of Muhammad. They're apostates. They pay lip service. Muhammad says one thing. Muslims say the direct opposite, thereby failing to submit to Muhammad, showing that they're hypocrites and unbelievers. And so is iron stone smoocher. Why do I say that? Because the Quran says Jesus' ministry is for all creatures, not just for the Jews. So Christians, are you ready for those passages, those proofs? I'm just going to limit myself to the Quran because if I introduce the Hadith, he's going to get embarrassed even worse. 
So do me a favor. Can you go to chapter 3 of the Quran, Surah Al-Imran? Chapter 3, read verses 3 and 4. So we will see in chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, whether the gospel of Jesus and even the Torah, was it limited only to the Yahud, Bani Israel, or was it given to be light and guidance for all mankind? Chapter 3, verses 3 and 5. Does it matter to you which translation, brother? No, brother, because you also know the Arabic and you'll correct it if they're misquoting. That's true. All righty. We are going to go there. So um, we are going to go to uh, verse 3. Yep. It is he who sent down to you in truth the book confirming what went before it. And he sent down the law and the gospel. Before this, as a guide to mankind. And no, notice, said, does it say to Yahud, Bani Israel, or mankind? Mankind. Okay, say it again. To the Torah and the gospel, a guide to mankind. Exactly. Now, you can confirm the Arabic. I'm going by memory. I believe here it says nas. It's the word nas, not alamin, right? Yeah, let me, let me just make sure. So so nobody can accuse us of yeah, doing yeah. anything funny. I don't want to just rely on my memory, even though I trust the Holy Spirit to perfect my ability to recall for the glory of Jesus Christ and sanctify us to give us the power to yes. listen. Yes. Yeah. Hoden, hoden lin nasi. Okay, so it's the word nas. Now, you know why that's important, Al? Of Here's course it is. Yeah. The Torah and the gospel given as guidance to nas, mankind. Do me a favor. Go to Surat al-Baqarah, chapter 2, and read verse 185. Surat al-Baqarah. Chapter 2, verse 185. Two, right? 185. We'll go there. And we're going to read. Uh, Ramadan is the month in which was sent down to uh, uh, down the Quran as a guide to mankind. Once again, wait, wait, we have wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't go any further. Yep. Ramadan is the month in which... The Quran was sent down unto mankind. Quran sent to mankind. Guess what the word is there? Linnas, the word. Absolutely. Hoden linnasi. The same word, exact same word. Exact same phrase. Quran was sent as a guidance to mankind. The Torah and the gospel were sent down as guidance to mankind. Now, will iron stone smoocher say the Quran was only sent to the Arabs? Because there it says, Quran was sent down as guidance. Linnas. For mankind, which Blackstone Kisser would deny the Quran was sent for all mankind. But the exact phrase is used of the Torah and the gospel. It says exactly. the, the gospel, like the Quran, sent as guidance for mankind. So exactly. Christian, you see not only the gospel of Jesus, the Torah also is for all mankind, not just the Jews, according to the Quran. Yeah, according to the Quran, it's not to the Jews only, to mankind and guidance. Guidance to mankind. A guidance. Now, but it gets worse for iron stone smoocher. Because I want you to go to chapter 19, verse 21 of the Quran. Chapter 19, verse 20, 21. What does it say about Jesus? He's a sign and a mercy, an ayah and rahmah, sign and a mercy for who? Bani, exactly. Bani Bani I, I, Exactly, brother. I just used this argument recently. Uh, here is what it says. And he said, thus, this is the translation, it will be your Lord says, it is easy for me. And we will make him, in reference to Jesus, a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And the word in Arabic, ayatan linnasi. Linnasi. Okay. So here it's nas, right? He is a miracle for nas. And a mercy unto the Nas, right? Mankind. Exactly. exactly. But, ah, but wait, wait, wait. In 2191, it says he's not just a sign to Lil Nas. He's a sign, Lil Alameen. Alameen for all beings. So if you now already go to chapter 21, Surah Al Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 91, is Jesus a sign for all creatures? Because the word is Alameen. Alameen. Okay. Yes, we'll look at it here. And uh, uh, translation says, and remember her who guarded her chastity. So we breathe into her of our word and we made her and her son a sign for all peoples. Lil Alamina. Yeah, so Alamin doesn't mean 
Bani Yahud. It means all worlds, all creatures, all beings. Exactly. And that's what exactly Muslims say that Muhammad was sent lil alameen. Okay, so did the Christians see how Iron Stone Smoocher just destroyed the Quran, proved Muhammad is a false prophet because the Bible, specifically Matthew and the Quran, teach Jesus' gospels for all creatures, not just the Jews. And yet he wanted to misquote Matthew to teach otherwise. And in so doing, he proved Muhammad didn't know what he's talking about. So that the stone smoocher is not even a good Muhammadan, which is why he's now silent. Where is he? Exactly. Oh, at last we heard he changed the topic. <laughs> That's it? He's gone? <laughs> what an ironic man, isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, ironically, he provided an example of many examples of some of the most common silly objections raised by Muslims against the Christian faith. So that's what we're going to talk about. And let me know when we have to wind things down. Okay? That's what we're going to have to talk about. Now, yeah, another... well, we're really, brother, we want to thank Iron Man uh, yes. for helping us with our topic today. Ridiculous arguments raised by Muslims. There you go. That's an example. Okay. So now, now what we're going to do, we're going to take... Another typical objection, and the objection goes because he mentioned it earlier, that we supposedly worship three gods and that this concept of, of the Godhead is foreign to what is taught in the Old Testament. Okay, so his argument, you Christians believe Father, Son, and Spirit, one plus one plus one, that's three gods. Okay, let me now turn it against them. I said it on David's live stream last night, and I'm going to repeat it again. Folks, and I want the Christians to hear me, and I want you to go to all the top Muslim apologists' social media pages. Start with Shabir Ali, a guy I don't respect. I'll be honest. He's a coward, but I promise that when I debate him, I will decimate him respectfully. I won't be rude. I won't insult him, but by the power of Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge, I'll decimate him. Here's my challenge to Shabir Ali, Adnan Rashid. Hamza Mayed, Ijaz Ahmed, Farida, all of them. Debate Sam Shimon on the topic. Does the Quran teach Tawheed? The Quran teach Tawheed. One topic. Now, if they want to do a second topic on does the Bible teach a trinity, I will accept. But we're not going to do two topics in one. One topic, does the Quran teach Tawheed? The other topic, does the Bible teach a trinity? But not two topics in one. Issue that challenge, say he's calling you out. Because now what I'm going to show you, Christians, the Quran does not teach Tawheed. So let's take this other objection, a common objection, a silly objection that Muslims bring up. Trinity is not in the Bible, and you worship three gods. One plus one plus one, three gods. All right. Before I answer that, let me turn it against them. I'm going to turn it against them. Okay, you ready? Let me now use your argument. To show you, your argument ends up proving too much and falsifies the Quran. The word Tawheed is not in the Quran. And Al knows this. Most people who have been doing this for a long time know. The word Tawheed does not appear in the Quran. So if the Trinity not appearing in the Bible is a legitimate objection, disproving the Trinity, the fact that Tawheed doesn't appear in the Quran or in the Hadith, you won't find the Hadith where Muhammad uses the word Tawheed. That means Tawheed must be false. But then they'll tell you, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, Kafir. Don't you get it? It's not the word. The concept is taught in the Quran. But when we tell the Christian and the Muslims, well, that's the same thing with Trinity. Trinity means three in one. The Bible teaches the concept of the Trinity. Three persons who are one God. They'll say, no, it doesn't. Well, guess what, folks? Despite the fact that the Trinity does not appear in the Bible. The Bible does teach the triunity of God. If you interpret the Bible in its context as a whole and not take snippets out of context, and I will challenge and debate any Muslim on that. But here's what's ironic. Not only do you not find the word Tawheed in the Quran, the Quran doesn't even teach the concept of Tawheed. Exactly. It actually teaches, it actually teaches a warped, Islamic version of the Trinity, and it even teaches a multiplicity of gods. Are we ready to unpack that? Who's ready now for me to show you the Quran itself destroys Tawheed because it doesn't teach Tawheed? Because Al already knows this. I'm preaching to the choir with him. Who's ready? Are you getting the comments? Are they ready? Okay, they're, they're ready. Yeah, they're, they're giving you number one, man. They're listening. Okay. One more minute, yes. Now, 
<laughs> because Al Fadi, his mother tongue is Arabic, and some of you know this, some of you don't. Here's what's the ironic thing, Christians. Here's and by the way, this is all in our articles, answeringmuslims.com, answeringislam.net, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. We have all this information articles for you to download, print out, and use. We want you to learn this material and use it for the glory of Christ. Amen. The word tawheed comes from a verb, wahda. What does wahda mean? Wahda mean united. Do you wait, unite? Wait, wait. The very root from where you get tawheed, wahda or wahda, means to unify, to bring together, to unite. That's right. Irony of ironies, Al Fadi. And no kidding. The very word tawheed actually implies a plurality, a diversity of various things coming together to form a unity. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, they did. Iron Man, who's missing, by the way. Everybody's looking for him. He's gone missing. Yeah, he went. He went to the Black Stone because Black Stone fold, uh, failed. But yeah. it gets better. Let me show you now a warped satanic counterfeit of the Trinity. So for the record, I don't believe the Quran is the word of God. I don't believe Muhammad is a prophet. But I'm going to use the Quran for Muslims who believe it to show them. Their Quran even presents a warped Trinity that's not the true Trinity, but a Trinity nonetheless. Go to chapter 19, if you don't mind, Al. Let me know when we need to wind things down. Chapter, chapter 19 of the Quran. We're going okay. to start with 16 and read to 21. Surat al Maryam, chapter 19, verses 16 to 21. 16 to 21. Okay, very good. 19, 16 to 21. Mm -hmm. Very good. There we go. I mean, you know the Arabic, so you're going to confirm what I'm going to say about the Arabic. Okay. You want me to start reading? Yes, start at 16 and then read 17 and pause for a moment. As you do that, I'm just going to get me a cup of water. I'm right here. So don't be scared. I'm not going to leave you out. I'll never leave you. All right. So I'm going to start reading. Go ahead. And relate the story of Mary as mentioned in a book when she withdrew from her people to an eastern place, verse 17, and screened herself off from them. Then we sent our angel to her. You are killing and me. And he appeared heart. to her in yeah. the form of a well-proportioned man. You broke my heart, you pagan kafir. You read a butchering of the Arabic. You and I both know it doesn't say we sent our angels. So are you reading Sahih International? Is that the perversion you're reading? Well, no, this is Shir Ali. I can go and read another translation for you. It's no problem. Yeah. Let's you see what Yusuf Ali does. Yusuf Ali. Arbery. Sorry, guys, because they butchered okay. the Arabic. But that's a good example, brother. I mean, they need to see how the translation sometimes is unfaithful. I mean, exactly. it's absolutely unfaithful. Yes. Guys, so. did you catch what Yusuf Ali did? And the, the Muslims accuse Christians and Jews of corrupting the text and misinterpreting it. And yet Muslims are masters of perverting, distorting, shredding the Quran by their shameless misinterpretation of what the Quran says. In, 19, in chapter 19, verse 17, it doesn't say we sent our angel but now I want you to read either Pictal Arbery, and we'll tell you what the Arabic says. Yeah, so this one is Pictal, and, and notice what it says. And you're absolutely correct. And I'm glad we really demonstrated to people that they need to be careful to get multiple translations to be able to see which one is faithful. You see, they play with you if you don't know Arabic. That's the problem. So verse 16, and make mention of Mary in the scripture when she had withdrawn from her people to a chamber looking east, verse 17, now everybody notice, and had chosen seclusion from them, then we sent unto her our spirit, mm -hmm. and it assumed for her uh, the likeness of a perfect man. Now let me comment on that. We sent her our spirit. The Arabic is ruhana. 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 Ruh, spirit. So now... Guys, no, two things here. Allah sent his spirit, ruh, that's the Arabic. And this spirit appeared as a man. So Allah's spirit can take on human form, human semblance, human shape, and appear, appear as a perfect looking man. I keep hearing my noise in the background. Is that from you over there? No, that's from you. No, because I muted myself, so there's nothing. Anyway, that's right. that's, the distraction is attacking. So notice, Allah's spirit can appear as a man. 
In fact, the human appearance was so convincing, Mary didn't know this was God's spirit. She thought it's a man trying to do something sinful against her. So now read from 20 to 21. Chapter 19, verse 20, 21. No, JKL, real quickly before you say that. I challenge this Mohammedan here who said, Gabriel, Ruh Quds. Here's my challenge, and Al Fadi will take Shahada if you can prove the challenge. Show me a single verse in the Quran that says, Gabriel, Jibreel is the Holy Spirit. Exactly. You are lying from your mouth. This exactly. is a lie from the pit of hell. Gabriel is never called the Holy Spirit or the Spirit in the Quran. That's a lie from hell. And I'm going to refute that lie in a minute. And this is the Spirit of God, and he's not Gabriel. But now read 20 and 21. Okay, verse 20. She said, how can I have a son when no mortal has touched me? Neither have I been and chastity. And, chastity. and then verse 21 says, he said, so it will be. Your Lord says, it is easy for me. And it will be that we may make of him a revelation for mankind and a mercy you skip. from you, us. You skip from 19 to 21. You skip. Why do you don't like 19 in your Quran? Well, I don't like number 19. You know, our Muslims are always fascinated yeah, with 19. Yeah, Raleigh and 19. Go All back right. To 19 so you read 19. Because he said, verse yes. 19, he yes. said, I am only a messenger of your Lord that I may bestow on you a faultless son. Yes. And by the way, to his credit, he was just following what I said. I said, read 20 to 21. So I'm going to take responsibility for misleading him. But still, he has to repent for my sin because you Amen. can ask forgiveness for my sin. Did you Lord. see what verse 19 says? The Spirit says to Mary, pay attention. Sorry, we didn't mean to distract you. So it was my fault. I remember I said 20, 21. In verse 19, the Spirit said to Mary, the Spirit said to Mary, I'm only a messenger from your Lord to bestow on you a pure son. So notice two other facts. The Spirit is distinct from Allah. He's the messenger of Allah. And he can create life because he says, I will give you a pure son. Li ahabba. Li ahabba means I will give yep. to you a son. So now, like yep. let me now unpack the, the implication. Allah's spirit can appear as a man, take on human semblance. Allah's spirit can speak and be spoken to. Allah's spirit is distinct from Allah because he's the messenger of Allah. Allah's spirit creates and gives life. Now, let me correct JKL, who's a wicked deceiver and a liar, because he's following the spirit of his prophet. He quotes Sahih Muslim, and he distorts it. He says, Aisha said, and Gabriel, the messenger of Allah, is among us, and the Holy Spirit has no match. Now, notice what this liar did. He assumed, because it says Gabriel is among us, and the Holy Spirit who has no match, that it's saying that Gabriel and the Holy Spirit are one of the same, as opposed to to saying that Gabriel and the Holy Spirit, both of them are with us. What a shameless liar you are. But again, I can't blame you because you're following the example of your God, who's the greatest deceiver of them all. So you're going to have to do something better than quote a hadith, which shows that there were two among the Muslims. The Holy Spirit and Gabriel were there. It doesn't mean Gabriel and the Holy Spirit are one and the same. But this liar thinks, this liar thinks, I'm not aware of the hadith. JKL. Let me repeat my point again, and I thank God he brought you here because you're going to be a test study to show Christians how to refute the lies of Islam for the glory of Jesus. Your hadith did not say Gabriel is the Holy Spirit. It simply says Gabriel was there and so was the Holy Spirit. Gabriel is among us and the Holy Spirit who has no match. It's not saying Gabriel, who is the Holy Spirit, is among us who has no match. It's talking about two entities. It's like me saying John the Baptist is here and Jesus Christ who has no match. Only someone stupid would think Jesus and John the Baptist are one and the same. One and the same. You got busted, JKL, so I'm not going to challenge you again. Give me an explicit reference where Gabriel is said to be the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to show you how your assertion backfires against you. But don't forget the point. Christians, listen to me. Chapter 19, verse 19, says, God's Spirit will cause Mary to get pregnant, Meaning God's spirit has the power to create and give life. That was chapter 19, verse 19. Further confirmation. Do me a favor, Al. Go to chapter 66, verse 12. Surat al-Tahrim. Chapter 66, verse 12. All righty. 66, verse 12. 
Someone said, Sam, you are a goose teacher. I hope not. I hope I'm a bull, not a goose. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chasing, therefore we breathed therein something of our spirit. And he and she put faith. Uh, 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 she put faith in the words of her Lord and His scriptures, and was of the obedient. Okay. Now let me repeat what he just read. In sixty-six twelve, it says, "Allah breathed His Spirit into." It says, "Fi He." Now, literally, the Arabic says, and some of them quoted the actual actual translation Arabic. It says, "Mary, the mother of our Lord, the daughter of Imran, ah sanat farjaha." Exactly. Ah sanat. Farjaha, farj, Al, you know the Arabic. What does it mean, Maryam bint, binti Imran? Ahsanat farjaha. What does farj mean there? Uh, but brother, it's disgusting. It's protecting her private parts, basically. That's what it means. So did you catch it? The Arabic literally says, Mary, who protected her sexual organ, her vulva. Sorry to use such graphic language because that's the Quran. And then it says, this is how sick Muhammad is. Then it says... And we breathe our spirit into her vulva, her private part. One sick, wicked, pornographic way of describing the virginal conception and birth of our Lord. But still, with that said, still with that said, understand what you just read. Allah breathed the spirit into Mary's body. Al and the Christians. Why did Allah breathe his spirit into Mary's body? To do what? Why did the spirit enter into Mary's body? To impregnate her. You got it. So the spirit said to Mary, I came to cause you to get pregnant, conceive a child. So he entered her in some miraculous way. We don't know how because Muhammad is simply aping what Luke 1, 35 says. Muhammad heard Christians saying that Mary was caused to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit as a virgin. No man touching her sexually. She conceived and gave birth as a sexual virgin. Glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus, how he honored and purified his blessed mother. Okay. He heard that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary to cause her to get pregnant without sex. So then he took that and he made it part of his Quran. So now the Spirit caused Mary to conceive the physical body, the human nature of Christ, meaning the Spirit creates and gives life. So now Christians, and now help me do the math. Allah and the Spirit are not one and the same. The Spirit is sent by Allah, breathed out by Allah. We breathe something of our spirit. So he's breathed out by Allah, distinct from Allah, can appear as a man, speak and be spoken to, creates and gives life. So Allah and the Spirit are two, and yet the Spirit creates and gives life like Allah does. Now if JKL is that stupid to say, that the spirit is Gabriel. Christians, I want you to hold JKL, his feet to the fire. Ask JKL, are you saying Gabriel is co-creator and life giver with Allah? That Gabriel created the body of Jesus so that Gabriel, this angel, is co-creator with Allah, life giver with Allah. Because if you say yes, you just turn Allah into a mushrik. Because Allah took a creature and made a creature his partner. In his ability to create and give life, you just condemned Allah to hell for committing shirk, which is the sin that Allah won't forgive. Good Amen. job, JKL. Yay. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And by the way, I want to make a quick comment to Dominga. Dominga is saying, I'm listening to your program, and I disagree that our supreme, loving, and holy God is the same as Allah of the Muslim. We when in the world did we say this? That's what happened when you show up late, by the way. Anyway, keep going, brother. Okay, now, further proof, further proof that, that the Spirit creates. Can you do me a favor? Go to chapter 38 of the Quran, verses 71 to 72. 71 30, to 72. 38. Chapter 38, verses 71 to 72. All right, and read that for us. All righty. Yep. So 71 says, when your Lord said to the angels, see, I am creating a mortal of a clay. When I have shaped him and breathed my spirit in him, fall you down or fall down, worship him, basically, bowing before him. 
Now read that again, 38, 71, 72. Notice again, one more time, because I want the Christians to hear this. One more time. When your Lord said to the angels, see, I am creating a mortal of a clay or out of a clay. And when I have shaped him and breathed my spirit in him, fall down bowing before him. Okay, two points again, folks. Adam was created from clay. You're going to see why that's important in a minute. Adam was created from clay. Christians, listen to this. Adam was created from clay. But how did Adam become a living soul? How did Allah animate Adam's body? He breathed his spirit into Adam. So notice. When Allah breathed his spirit, the spirit then made Adam a living being. Again, showing Allah's spirit is the life giver. But now notice the spirit is breathed out from Allah. Breathed out from Allah. Qu guys, can you ask JKL the following question? And he just used the example of Jesus, which I'm going to use to show that even the Quran says Jesus is creator and greater than Muhammad. Ask JKL or any Muslim. If the spirit is breathed out from Allah, does this not prove that the spirit is not part of creation, but he's part of Allah because he comes out of Allah. He comes out of Allah because Allah breathed him out. So if he's breathed out by Allah, that means he's not part of creation. He's part of Allah. If he's part of Allah, what more proof do you need? The spirit is not a creature. What more proof do you need the spirit is not a creature? Unless he wants to argue, there are parts of Allah that are created, not eternal. So Allah had to change and acquire things to make himself complete. But now, how does this end up proving Jesus is God? Guys, remember, it says Allah created Adam from clay and breathed life into it by sending the spirit that he breathed out into Adam. Do me a favor, Al. Go to chapter 3. Verse 49, JKL, I'm going to use Jesus to destroy the Quran. So keep mentioning Jesus, JKL. You're helping me destroy Muhammad for the glory of Jesus. Chapter okay. 3, verse 49. All right. We're going there right now. Okay. Um, say, uh, well, actually, I'll read a different tragedy, Arbery. Say, whether you hide what is in your breast or publish it, God knows it. God knows what chapter three verse forty nine, brother. I'll, I'll, uh, this time I'm the mistake is sorry. yours. I'm sorry. It is twenty nine. Yeah, is, I see. Yeah, I have. I, you know, uh, are you saying I don't hear well? That's okay, bro. I'm just saying that you only hear what you want. It's okay, like exactly. Uh, so uh, here it is. Uh, to be a messenger to the children of Israel, saying, "I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I will create from." Uh, for you out of clay as the likeness of a bird then i will breathe into it and it will be a bird by the leave of god okay, pause will, right there. Yeah. Pause right there. folks the quran says jesus created from clay a bird breathe into it and the bird came to life i want jkl and any muslim to show me someone other than allah and jesus in the quran Creating from clay and breathing life into that clay. Let JKL answer the challenge. Jesus creates exactly like Allah creates. I create. And by the way, if JKL knows Arabic, Al knows Arabic. The verb create, <clears throat> khalaqa. That's the, from the verb. That verb, khalaqa, is only used of Allah and Jesus, and it's never used of anyone else. In fact, one of the names of Allah is Al Khalik, the Creator. And yet, the verb Khalaqa is only used of Allah and Jesus. Allah and Jesus are the only ones in the Quran who are said to create from clay and make those clay objects living beings by the power of their breath. In other words, Allah has taken Jesus to be a co creator with Him. And Jesus' breath gives life like Allah's breath does, showing that Allah and Jesus are one in the Quran. I know, brother. And here's the one thing I want to make sure I want to emphasize it because Muslims are going to jump all over this and they're going to say, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It says by the will of Allah. It says by the uh, leave of Allah. Hey, it doesn't mean 
that Jesus did not have that ability and the power okay. to do it. What it means, he was given permission to well, unleash his that. power. But I want to answer, but because Iron Stone Smoocher, who was hiding, he just resurfaced. Guys, make sure Iron Stone Smoocher, Iron Guard, listens to me. He said, Jesus did not create from nothing. LOL, idiot. But he's an idiot who makes Muhammad sound literate. Because Allah didn't create Adam from nothing, idiot. It says Allah created Adam from clay. Jesus created a bird from clay. So Allah didn't create Adam from nothing, idiot. He took clay and then created Adam from clay and breathed into the clay and Adam came to life. Exactly what Jesus did, idiot. He took clay and from clay created a bird and breathed life into it, idiot. LOL, LOL. So you see? Hey, why don't you that? calm down and drink water, bro? Okay, brother. Well, because <laughs> he didn't get the point. Now, I want the Christians to get the point. Did Allah create Adam from nothing? Well, there is a verse that says man was made from nothing, another contradiction in the Quran. Or did the passage that we read, chapter 38, verses 71 to 72. No, Ezekiel didn't do that, JKL. You're a liar from the pit of hell. In Ezekiel 37, there were bones. All Ezekiel did was summon the four winds to enter the bones. He didn't create anything, and it was a vision referring to the nation of Israel being resurrected after being removed from the land. JKL, moron. And why are you going to my Bible, JKL? Your Quran says Jesus alone creates from clay among the messengers. So JKL, quote to me a verse from the Quran where someone other than Allah and Jesus create from clay and give life to that clay object by their breath. You see what a joke this guy is? He now runs to my Bible, which he says is corrupt, to try to bail Muhammad out, whereas I'm limiting myself to the Quran. Hey, ultimate stone licker, you're back again? Oh, my goodness. Ultimate stone licker is here. Now, folks, let's sum up what we just read. Allah and his spirit and Jesus are all creators and life givers. Guys, let's do the math. Allah creates from clay and breathes life into it. Jesus creates from clay and breathes life to it. Allah's spirit animates inanimate objects, makes them come to life. And Allah's spirit caused Mary to conceive life in her womb. So Allah, the spirit, and Jesus, these three are creators and life givers. So let's do the math. One plus one plus one, that's three. Now let's answer that objection. Let's answer that objection. Ah, oh, but Jesus said, Be with me Allah, by the permission of Allah. Go to chapter 5, verse 110. Surah Al-Maida, verse 110. Chapter 5, verse 110. Yeah, we have already given up on your Quran and Muhammad because Muhammad is burning in hell, and we're glorifying Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. So we've by the way, bro, okay. you wanted me to tell you, we have about 10 minutes left. Okay, let's, 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 we'll, we'll do this in 5, 110. Chapter 5, verse 110. All right, chapter 5, verse 110. When God says, Jesus, son of Mary, remember my blessing upon you and upon your mother when I confirmed you with the Holy Spirit. There you go. Allah, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. Go ahead. To speak to men in a cradle and of age. And when I taught you the book, the wisdom, the Torah, the gospel, and when um, thou createst out of clay by my leave, as the likeness of a bird and you breathe into it and it is a bird That's right. and and read the next part. keep going no yeah read the next part keep on and by my leave and you healed the blind and the leper by my leave and you bring the dead forth by my leave and oh, we pause right there yeah. i want to challenge iron stone smoocher and jkl aka the Joker of Allah. I want you to quote to me in the Quran where someone other than Allah and Jesus, re listen to my question carefully, someone other than Allah and Jesus that gives life to the dead, that raised the dead back to life. Only Jesus and Jesus alone in the Quran creates from clay and breathes life into it exactly like Allah does. Only Jesus and Jesus alone in the Quran raises the dead back to life like Allah does. Now, let me explain what it means, be it near Allah. So the Muslims will say, well, okay, but Allah allowed him to do it. Guys, now get ready to that for that response. Because they'll say it says, by Allah's permission, Allah permitted him to do that, allowed him to do that. Two responses. 
even if the expression be ithni Allah by the will of Allah meant Allah gave him that ability, we still end up with Allah being a mushrik. Now, for those of you who don't know what a mushrik is, the Quran in chapter 4, verse 48, and chapter 4, verse 116 states, there's one sin Allah won't forgive, the sin of shirk. Shirk. It's like shirt, but with a K at the end. That sin is to attribute others with Allah, attribute humans or angels with Allah, in Allah's ability to do things like create and give life. So this simply means Allah committed shirk because he took Jesus and enabled Jesus to create exactly like him, to possess the breath of life exactly like him, and raise the dead exactly like him. So Allah made Jesus his partner. Allah committed shirk. So Muslims, you condemned Allah to hell because Allah committed shirk he committed the one sin he won't forgive, so Allah can't forgive himself. He has to send himself to hell. But the second point, second point, the expression be ithni Allah does not mean Allah gave Jesus this ability. That's a lie. Be ithni Allah means Allah permitted him. Now let me give you an example. What's the difference between me giving you the ability and me allowing you to do something? Exactly. Our body. I give him permission to drive my car. But that assumes Al-Fadi has the ability to drive a car. My permitting Al-Fadi to drive is not the same thing as me enabling and empowering Al-Fadi to drive. For me to give him permission to drive, that assumes he can drive and has the ability to drive. So giving permission is not the same as giving ability and power to do something. The fact that Allah permits Jesus to do that means Jesus must have the ability to do the thing that Allah is allowing him to do. So That's Muslim, right. ultimate stone stick, uh, smoocher, your God got busted. Jesus is Lord over Allah and Muhammad. Go ahead, Al. Sorry. Amen. I mean, and, and I agree with you. In the Arabic, it says, It didn't say, meaning by the power of Allah. Exactly. I mean, what, what, what prevents Allah from saying, by, by, by my power, he was able to do this? What, what's, what's so difficult about that? Yes, sir. And notice, he's saying, I'm playing uh, semantic circus. Even though they tell me the Quran is in Arabic, and you can understand in Arabic, and I just gave you the Arabic. Be ithni is not be quwwati. It's not by my power or by the power of Allah. It's by my permission. Let me give the example again. No, actually, warrior Chris, it's not anger and uh, management. It's called passion and zeal for Jesus, something you don't have because you're a spineless coward and you have no guts to be passionate for God because you're a tool of the devil. So now sit on that. Glory to Jesus. Now, coming back to the issue. Let me repeat it again. Al, I give you permission to drive my car, but Al can't drive. So I can give him permission all day, all night to drive, but if he can't drive, my permitting him is useless. But for me to tell Al, you have my permission to drive my car, that assumes he has the ability to drive the car. That's all the Quran is saying. Allah permits Jesus to do what he wants, and that's exactly what the Bible teaches. That when Jesus came to the earth, he only did what the Father wanted him to do, no more, no less, because Jesus, being the perfect son, works in perfect union with the Father. So here's another truth that Muhammad heard and ape and made part of the Quran without realizing that truth exposes him as a son of Satan and Antichrist. Glory to Jesus Christ. And Warrior Chris, grow a backbone and be a man once in your life, not a sissy or an evangelifish if you're a so-called Christian. Love you, Al. Yeah, baby. Hey, man. You know, I mean, I feel like uh, maybe somebody need to go and resuscitate Allah because he's uh, he's fainting right now. I mean, he's just he's got he's been fasting all day, and you're just destroying him. Yeah, and that's another question. Why are you Mohammedans here? You you black stone smoochers, idolaters here, agging Christians, mocking Christians when it's supposedly your holy pagan month of fasting. Why aren't you fasting and pretending to be pious? like this ultimate stone liquor. All he can do is come and stop Christians and humiliate himself and his God, and he gets pwned over and over again. But guys, this is your month of pagan fasting. So be good little pagans. Try to pretend to be pious. Shut your mouth. Stop egging Christians and follow chapter 6, verse 108. 
Follow chapter 6, verse 108, where it says, Do not insult their gods, lest they insult Allah. So keep mocking our God, the true God, and we're going to punish your prophet and insult Allah, who's actually Satan, who appeared to Muhammad to deceive him and you from the true Christ. So listen to your Quran, be good little pagans, go back to your fasting, leave well enough alone, unless you want to expose Muhammad to shame and ridicule, because we will expose Muhammad for the pedophile, the woman raping, woman prostit prostituting, false prophet he was. And yes, he did rape women. Chapter 4, verse 24, he says that his thugs, if they take captive a married woman, a married woman captive, this is in Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150 in the English translation. They captured some married women from Altas, married women, and they lusted for them. So Allah sent down 424 saying, go ahead, sleep with them, defile them, even though their husbands are still alive, and sell them. This is not only rape, it's adultery in the name of Allah and his messenger. And not only that, he did muta, muta, where you ask a woman to marry you for a certain period of time, divorce her and pay her to, to satisfy your sexual lusts. And Allah's messenger allowed Muslims to do that. That's nothing more than prostitution. So Muhammad was a woman raping, woman prostituting, stone kisser, and you have the audacity to believe this man was a prophet. He's under the feet of Jesus, under the wrath of Jesus Christ. Christ is Lord over Muhammad and over Satan who inspired Muhammad. Amen, Lord Jesus. Keep us in love with you. Wash us in your blood. Fill us with your spirit and make us bold as lions. Never, never deny you in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. And uh, brother, uh, I want to be respectful to your time. And hopefully you can join me again next week, brother. I mean, this is a lot of fun, yeah, obviously, and a lot of people are enjoying this. But tell people, please, some people here who are my followers, maybe they don't know how to get a hold of you, how to follow you. And uh, most importantly, the brother here lives by faith. So I yes. encourage you to give as well. So share some information really with him. Here's where I'm jealous. In my live streams, I get close to 200. One time I got about 270. Hopefully the numbers will increase. For the glory of Jesus, not for the praise of men. On your live stream, you got 310. That's not but, fair, bro. Brother, that's that's boring, your, presence, your presence is important, Dude. brother, for us. I mean, praise the Lord for that. So, Him so and David Wood are cure for insomnia. Go to my YouTube <laughs> channel, Shamunian. S-H-A-M-O-U-N-I-N. Subscribe. I try to do live streams daily, and I try to go in-depth on core biblical doctrines for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's Subscribe. amazing. Watch those sessions. Join me when I'm live. Join my social media pages on Facebook because that's when I announce when I'm going live. Go to my blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Answeringislamblog.wordpress.com and answeringislam.net. We have over 200 articles on all these topics for the glory of Jesus. Pray for me. Pray for Al. Pray for our families, our children, for our health, holiness, purity, and provision. And Lord willing, tonight I'm going to go live with Jay Dyer on his YouTube so again, Nataverse, if you have the link, join us because we're going to talk about the Trinity and prophecies of Jesus in the Old Testament in response to Muslims. Pray for that. Pray for anointing. Join us for the glory of Jesus. Al, I love you, baby. Love you too, man. And you guys can go to my channel, Sira International, on YouTube and watch um, many of the amazing videos we've done uh, with this dear brother, Sam. Uh, so uh, I owe my training on apologetics and uh, also learning about defending the faith and the Trinity and the Bible to this dear brother. So I encourage all of you to learn from his amazing uh, and anointed teachings. So, uh, brother, we love you. I hope you can Amen. join me again next week. And uh, We'll take it from there. Any last words, everybody? You have any last questions, any last wish, any last meal? You know, where is Iron Man, man? He's gone. I mean, he's just gone, bro. What happened? Remember this, Remember this folks. Christ is risen, risen indeed, modern author. Lord Jesus comes sooner than later. Amen. Wash us in your blood, clothe us in your love, seal us by your spirit, and do that Amen. for our loved ones. In my case, my two angels, in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to all of you. Blessings to you, brother. Take care, everybody.